All right, so we are returning to assignment three. I'm going to shortcut it by going to assignments off the home page. We're getting pretty used to this now. Scrolling down to assignment three. Remember that there is a mentorship presentation there. This is to help you if you're trying to do this from home and you want just a reminder on how to do it with the freeware like PhotoP and giftmaker.me. So what I am teaching this morning for our morning section is how to do it in Photoshop, which is not freeware. It's the Adobe program, the, the industry kind of standard for raster imaging. So that's where that can be helpful to you. But let's continue with our work. So what I have posted so far for assignment three is my rough storyboard. I did it both digitally and by hand, right? I tend to like to draw things like this by hand. But either can work as long as you have nine frames that, that tell you what the transformation is that happens. The transformation I drew was to the setting. So I established the setting and then I start dropping out parts of the setting by having my character rain down like hail. And then I look at my animation and my animation uses movement and time-based media. And my only regret about this, there's the nice subtlety of the clouds, but the transformation is not as dramatic as I would like in terms of those foreground elements being bumped out. So I have an idea for that. And I'm going to show you how you can now do what's called animating on the stage to work with that. So in the last video, I showed you how I outputted that GIF animation, but I can always review because many of us are finishing up our animation. So I open up my assignment three folder. I try to have everything organized. Organization is essential for effective animating because there are so many elements. You have to have a plan for where you go. The first thing you definitely need is your storyboard sketch. That's the first thing you post as a requirement for this project. So I'm going to have this open in the corner so I know what I am trying to do, right? What the big moments are. And then I am going to open up my assets file, right? In Photoshop, even though I'm all done with it. And then I am going to also open up my stage file in Photoshop. So it's the first project we've used two different raster files to create a project. One is, like on the stool there, my collection of different props to use. Like these are all the different props being moved for the growing of the, of the candy foreground back after it gets knocked out. This was my last combined frame, and then all of these are on their own layers, right? So that gives you all the things you play with. Then you copy those over as merged frames to your stage, and this stage is where I have all 36 frames that create my animation. So once you have all your frames in your stage, you go to Window, and you open your Timeline. And your Timeline... We can output it, and you can see each of your frames. And what's a little odd for this is that all the timeline tool does is program these eyeballs. So notice, on frame one, all of these frames are at an opacity of zero. They're turned on, but they're at an opacity of zero. But my first frame is at 100%, right? My first layer. And then on to to frame two, same thing. This one is now 100% and all the others are at 0%. So that's just how the timeline tool works. So if I play it through and I've set my, my custom timing, now I can do what's called animating on the stage. So if I don't think I have a big enough transformation, I'm gonna show you some really helpful tricks in Photoshop, which is a big advantage of digital animation for how to kind of build up to certain moments and make them stand out. So, what are my big moments of transformation? Well, when the, the creature drops down and hits, so I'll try to pause it, right, at that frame. When it comes down and hits one of these things, I have that little impact blast, but I want to heighten that impact blast. 
And I can do that now on the stage. So this is called animating on the stage. So what I do is I go to the frame that I think needs a little oomph. And then I go to the layer. So this is going to be frame eight, layer eight. This is the layer that is the only thing that is showing on this frame. And then I double click on the layer to add a layer style. And the layer style I wanna add to really make this impact feel more extreme is let's try an inner glow. Actually, let's try Let's try a gradient. So I'm going to do a gradient overlay. The type of gradient overlay I'm going to do, I'm going to use, let's see, iridescence. It's kind of nice and powerful. And I'm going to choose this one, which is pink in the middle. But of course, I can customize any of these. But I'm going to use this one first. Actually, I'll use a warm one first. All right, and now I'm going to add to this. I'm going to add a gradation. I'm going to add a color. And I'm going to add an orange. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how you can customize these gradations. We're going to learn more about gradations later. By moving that slider, right? Then I say, okay. Now, instead of it being a gradation like this, layered on top of my my frame i'm going to make it radial so it kind of grows from the middle and i'm going to reverse it there we go so it's like a sun blast now i'm going to take the opacity way down right and you can see that impact so now Notice I haven't changed the pixels in my layer, but I've added this layer style to that. And it can be turned on and off. So first of all, I'm going to see what it looks like. You can see it really dramatically in this frame. How it goes all of a sudden from blue to that bright flash of yellow. Though you can still follow the action. So that's called animating on the frame. Now what I want to do is actually have it impact the color of the setting for every frame after that until the next big movement. So that's going to be all of these frames. I want to change the color until this moment. So between frames 9 and 14, I am going to animate on the stage. And to do that, I select all those frames. I'm going to go to nine and I'm going to, actually, let me do this first, go back to eight and I'm going to copy that layer style so that I can then use it on frame nine and paste the layer style, but I'm going to alter it. So I'm going to make it really subtle. So I'm going to take its opacity Actually, I'll use it as a blending mode, and I'll change it to soft light. And then I'll just up. There we go. It's kind of like an after image. So 93%. So now it goes from this to this big impact to this after image. And then I'm going to continue that after image in the following frame. So I'm going to copy this layer style. And I'm going to put it on frame 10. Paste that layer style. I'm going to put it on frame 11. Paste that layer style. I'm going to put it on frame 12. Paste that layer style. This is after I've already outputted my timing. Frame 13. Paste that layer style. And this does not hurt your pixels at all. Frame 14 is the last one where I'll paste that layer style. And then here, on frame 15, that's when I'll do a new layer style. So I'm going to paste it, but then I'm going to change it. And since I did yellow the first time, now I'm going to make it so it goes for a different gradient. 
It's going to be, let's see, normal mode. It's going to be an opacity in the 30s, and I'm going to change the gradient. I'll start with iridescence or maybe pastels. Let's see, these are the new ones. And I'm going to go more towards these magentas, kind of these candy colors, right? So I want to pick one in the middle, and I'm going to make this brighter, maybe a little warmer, like a salmon color. All right. So now that's what's going to happen when this impact occurs. So this is a mirroring of this one this yellow impact, but it's going towards the pinks. All right, so let's just see how this looks. You can always play it through. But what I'm trying to do is make my transformations more obvious. So you see those color shifts that happen? I only have two of them so far. I'm going to have three in total. So there's one, there's two, and you can see the color shifts in the timeline. So at 15, I want to make this a little bit more extreme, this effect. So let me see if I change it to let's see. Oh, that's why. Sorry. make it hard mix that's that's too extreme let's see there we go I like pin light so that's going to be the hit that happens I'm gonna start it at normal right and now I'm gonna use that same layer style with pin light for each subsequent frame. Okay, so I'm going to copy this layer style. Then I'm going to go to frame 16 and I'm going to paste it in. But I'm going to alter it to be the blending mode of pin light. And then I'm going to do that for all the frames until the next impact. So this is animating on the stage. Oh, and I didn't copy it, so I need to copy it this time. Because once you make the change, you need to recopy the layer style. So say OK. Copy layer style. Now frame 18, paste layer style. Frame 19, paste layer style. Frame 20, paste layer style. Now I'm doing this because my transformation just didn't feel impactful enough. It was kind of hard to tell what was changing frame to frame. So now this is the next big frame. And this will be another color shift. So I'm going to paste the layer style. I'm going to shift it to normal mode. And this time I've done yellow, I've done magenta. Now I'm going to do something more in the blues. Something like this. Change that frequency of color. All right, I'm going to set it to normal mode. And unfortunately, I just did that on the wrong layer, so I need to copy that copy it, clear it, 